smooth jazz is a terrible term to start with. And that was a manufactured term by people who were programming radio stations and intermediary, let me put it that way, at that particular point. They really grew out of what we call fusion music. The industry puts music into a lot of boxes, you know, and I think that's also created by the business aspect of this thing because in order for radio to sell advertising, which is what they're all about, it's like they try to create demographic boxes so advertisers could be very targeted. So if they say, this is classical music, this is urban music, this is rock and roll music, this is R&B music, this is classical music, this is straight ahead jazz music, this is smooth jazz music, everybody creates a box. When the retailers, when there were record retailers like Tower and so on, you'd go into the store and they'd have departments. This was the smooth jazz, this was the R&B, this was the urban, this was that, and they followed those same boxes. Magazines came along in the media, made the same boxes. As running a record label, you're in the position, well, if I'm gonna have to market something in this environment, I have to make those things fit into the boxes. When I would sit with artists to make a record, they'd say, I wanna do this Stevie Wonder tune, and the next thing I wanna play is this Horace Silver thing and this Monk song. I said, wait a second, how could you put this all on the same record? These are all different kinds of music. Where is it gonna go? Where, what, what radio station's going to play it? What box are they going to put you in? So you were forced at that time in history to fall into these boxes, so you did that. One of the boxes that we were involved in from the very beginning was this whole idea of contemporary music, which was taking jazz, the elements of jazz, which is swing in many ways, and certainly improvisation and, 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 these, and songs, and putting them together with mixing them with Latin music, with, with mixing them with R&B music, and in some cases with rock music, with electronics and electric guitars and so on. And it beca became called fusion music. That opened up the door to a lot of young people who were interested in those elements of music who weren't into going to the, into the village vanguard and hearing somebody play 30 choruses and I got rhythm changes. That was a different, that was the pure straight ahead jazz audience which was relatively small. Now, by combining funk music and R&B music or rock music, it expanded the audience tremendously. You know, Miles Davis was one of the first ones to understand that and do that, you know, with Bitches Brew and that whole idea. Bringing together rock music and doing rock festivals, playing jazz. The history of what became smooth jazz was taking those elements of music, mixing them together, and radio programmers, as they were programming that, got to the place where they took actually the most pop, simplified commercial elements of that music and programmed complete stations around that, trying to reach a certain demographic. And those radio stations in many times had ratings because they were played in the background of Victoria's Secret stores or shopping malls or all kinds of places. So the music was played there, so it got a certain amount of exposure. But it took the music of a big, kind of catalog or a palette of this type of music and narrowed it down to one little piece of it and then any artist that wanted to be on that station had to play this little piece of the music because the only way you could get exposed. So all these artists start replicating that piece of music and it formed something that was not very exciting from a musical point of view and it was great background music. Background music means that you don't listen to the music. <laughs> But it wasn't the music that it was intended to be by any of the musicians who were making it. So in some way, it was a very bastardized version of something that was very compelling. And when I sit with the people who are involved in the ground floor of that music, whether it's, it's somebody like George Duke or Marcus Miller or David Sanborn and all of us who were doing all the music during the 70s and growing this into this thing and then see what the media created out of it in the industry, it, it's a joke. And in some way, it's, a, it's, it's not a good joke either. It's a sad joke because it didn't really have a very happy ending. And in some ways, it was music that opened up to a wider audience and then created a very narrow thing, which was rebelled upon by the industry itself. And it, and it turned into some kind of a crash landing, you know?